Hey, we got a new sponsor here at the Hunting Collective, and that's Chevy Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. You know, we all know a Chevy guy among our buddies, and this community of diehard Silverado fans in hunting and fishing just continues to grow. I got Chevy buddies. Most of them are crazy. Most of them will do anything outside. Uh, you know, most of them tend to brag about their truck. You know, the Chevy Silverado was designed, engineered, and built to thrive in the great outdoors. In fact, for more than 100 years, Chevy trucks have been a trusted partner for those with a passion for the outdoor lifestyle. So go to Chevy.com, that's C-H-E-V-Y.com, or your local Chevy dealer, and see for yourself what happens when legendary dependability beats modern capability. The Chevy Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. Black Rifle Coffee Company is a veteran-owned coffee company serving premium coffee to people who love America. This summer, we invite you to enjoy your coffee. By that, we don't just mean the great taste of America's coffee, but more the places you drink it, the passion and adventure it fuels and inspires, and the entertainment we serve along the way. Purchase at blackriflecoffee.com slash hunting and use code hunting at checkout for 20% off your purchase and your first coffee club order. Fuel your summer with America's coffee, Black Rifle Coffee. Hey, Phil. Hey, Ben. What's up? We got a new song. Remember that song from Kayla Ray that we said we were going to play? Yeah, I was I was wondering because this episode just started without the theme song and I was really confused. Yeah. yeah, I know you're confused. Behind the scenes, it's ready. Have you listened to it? Yes, I have. And it's beautiful. She's great. Uh, I made She's Great, You're Great. I'm not sure about me, but it is a beautiful song. We're going to play it in its entirety for this episode, just so you guys get a flavor of it, and we'll we'll splice it up to make it a little shorter for future episodes, but here it is. Do we have a name for the song, Phil? What's the name of the song? I I, I don't know. Did Kayla not name it? Come on, man. Well, I'm uh, Phil, the anthem of Phil T. Engineer. That's bad. Here it is. Nope. No, here it is. Here it is. Clean your gun and tune your bow We're the Hunt Collective Show Calling hunters new and old The Hunt Collective Show Working pick and shovel Or working pen in hand We congregate now As lovers of the land Mindful and we're focused We're just living for the search Dreaming of a fire And a salty gilbert But we ain't coming back Till it's cold and late Taking it slow so we can shoot straight Clean your gun, tune your bow We're the hunting collective show Calling hunters new and old Ain't no cold I'm told But no one's too good And we're all good enough We got fealty engineer calling And he's shooter's blood and Hard times calling And bitter vegans crying Remember there's always been old bride Ruled by our collective faith Taking it slow so we can shoot straight Clean your gun and tune your bow We're the Hunt Collective Show Calling hunters new and old The Hunt Collective Show Where facts are facts And opinions are subjective You're listening now To the Hunt Collective Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Hunting Collective. I am, of course, Benjamin Patrick O'Brien, and Phil the Engineer is here. Phil, say hello. Hey, Ben. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm feeling really uh, excited about this episode, but I do need... I We've just listened to Kayla Ray's uh, The Ode, the anthem of Phil T. Engineer for the very first time. Uh, I'm ex- that, that just like gets my blood up. I'm ready. It's almost like a goblin turkey's at like 80 yards, and we just got to get him the rest of the way. Uh, that's what this show is going to be for me. But um, I just got to tell you, this is this show is a little bit different. We're not going to have like a real... Uh, we're not going to have a guest from Cornell University. Let me just say that. Our guest is probably smarter than, than one James Tantillo, but uh, we're not going to have the regular show format. We're going to talk about... I feel the need, Phil, to address uh, the chapter formation of THC, the chapters that have formed in almost a ton of states we'll find out the the exact numbers here in a minute but i feel a need to address that topic and give everybody all the information they need probably too much information to join these chapters if you would like and then we can um, move forward from there but i just felt like we need to have a whole episode really talking about what's happening 
over on uh, Mark Zuckerberg's Facebook. Um, Phil, have you joined the Montana chapter yet? No, I, I am not on Facebook, Ben. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> what in the hell, Phil? Are you would you would you consider lighting up a Facebook page just for this purpose? Like Phil the engineer. Probably gonna need to have a fan page or maybe some sort of live video game streaming thing that you do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I'm willing to create kind of like a pseudo very light account for this for this purpose. I'm not gonna there's okay. a, there'll be a no pictures of me. I won't even yeah. use my real name. I don't even think you can do that on Facebook, but I'm gonna What about Mango? What about Mango? Sure. Does he get yeah. to be in there? <laughs> if you see Mango Mango T engineer on Facebook, that's actually me. Boy, <laughs> Mango T engineer, that's a that's a t shirt, maybe. Uh, <laughs> we have so many talented illustrators out there. If somebody wants to illustrate Mango T Engineer, I would happily make a t shirt out of that. But that's what we're going to do, Phil. So we need you to get involved. At this point, I've kept you at arm's length from the chapters because I didn't want you to get too excited about what we were doing and, um, and try to take control because I know that's how you like to do. But yeah, that's right. It's happening. And it's happening. It's like an underground movement. Uh, but a lot of people are talking about it. So I'm, I'm, uh, I want to keep it underground, but for the listeners of this podcast, we're gonna we're we're now joined by now. I'm not sure how to introduce this guy, Luke. I'm not sure how to introduce you. You did tell me that you and uh, your lovely wife Lisa are the first family of THC. Do you want to expound upon that at all? Well, I'm just uh, I just don't think that any of the other guys that uh, are running these state chapters probably even ran by who they were going to marry. You know, to you or Phil. I mean, how many of their wives do you know? I wouldn't, got call, that dedica- I wouldn't call that dedication. I mean, <laughs> that is a point. they could have just so you- married any any old lady and just with without even consulting you. And I mean, I yeah. just I, I don't think that that would be the uh, the proper thing for a, a follower of his cult to do. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I agree with you a lot. I mean, even if people came to to be followers of the cult with current wives, we should have some sort of review process. Exactly. Uh to to approve those wives, so you know, I I know you did call out Eric Hall as as not having done that. So I do want to officially say, you're well, you're welcome if you'd like it to the first family moniker now, and you know, if you should have additional offspring in the future or offspring, you know, your first offspring, uh, we can then talk about how that works um, <laughs> at that point. But you you're welcome to have that. So that let's make that official. Phil, can you give your blessing, please? Oh, of course. Yeah. Oh, awesome. All right, Thank good. you, Phil. So, good. Luke Reeves in Nebraska, you are the officially the Nebraska chapter leader. Yep. Um, and the first father of THC. Yeah. The first. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Let's go with that. So, tell like you're here too. I asked on our. We've created a Facebook page just for the leadership of our uh, chapter group and our cult. And I asked you to represent that leadership group that I think now is 34, 35 people something like that to to address the entire audience about what's going on what's been progressing here how the other people can get involved there's a lot of questions that we have people i'm sure will have what is this why are you doing it the question i've asked many times is it legal are we in any legal trouble um can we all get arrested and is there kool-aid uh, all these things that we need to be asking so i i did send you like a list of questions but first just describe like why you want to do the why you want to be a part of this thing that we're that we're uh, embarking on and what it means to you because there were a lot of people more than I thought posting on our little Facebook group about how much this meant to them and I take that you know take that very seriously take that to heart as much as it's hard for me to be <laughs> serious on this topic I do take to heart that you know people gathering and connecting over this particular topic is important um so give the people kind of how you came to want to want to do all of this. Well, um, I grew up in a small town in Nebraska. Um, just about everybody that I was friends with um, grew up hunting. Uh, you know, I went out with my dad. I did that kind of uh, that kind of thing. But as we grew up, um, you know, around there, it's all everybody goes out to, you know, their uncle's pasture or their, you know, their cousins got a cornfield where they accidentally missed, you know, the auger wagon with the combine. So there's a nice grain pile out there. And it essentially kind of is uh, kind of turned into basically uh, wherever you could park your truck. You know, if you could park your truck closest to the, the grain pile, you'd be the guy that the guy that got the best deer. And uh, so I just kind of got 
kind of got away from it as I got older, um, got out of hunting and everything. I actually majored in wildlife and natural resources at the University of Nebraska Kearney um, because I met a group of guys there when I went that did like hunting and they kind of uh, had the same sort of way, li- like to look at it the same sort of way that I did. You know, didn't, it wasn't fun just to go out and shoot your deer. You know, it wasn't fun just to go, out. it wasn't just about that. It was about going and being out in nature. It was about kind of getting back to the old ways of hunting where, you know, you went a lot of spot and stock. I don't even have very many friends in hunting with tree stands anymore. Um, so I really liked that. But then, of course, you know, uh, I grew up watching them. I'd wake up on Saturday mornings and watch all the hunting shows and kind of the hunting media that was out there. And, uh, you know, there's only so many episodes you can watch of guys, you know, thanking the good Lord that the, the big wide egg walked up under their feet or, you know, they just can't keep doing those same episodes. But then, uh, you know, I actually saw you on Joe Rogan telling the story about uh, seeing that baby up in the mountains and the wolf that wasn't there. Oh, yeah. Before. And uh, so that actually drew me to you um, through Joe Rogan. So I started listening to the Hunting Collective. As soon as you started uh, posting up episodes and stuff, I think I've had it on my phone. I think it's one of my longest recurring podcasts. And, uh, you know, I'm obviously a member of like BHA, I'm a member of Rocky Mountain Health Foundation, National Wild Turkey Association, all those things. It, you know, there's even some local ones um, like the Nebraska Big Game Conservation Association and things like that. And uh, I always kind of like those, but they always kind of all seem to, to be the same thing. You know, it's uh, come buy a raffle for a gun, eat a meal, and that's pretty much what it is. And uh, what I saw with this was an opportunity for us to, uh, you know, really have a bunch of like-minded individuals get together and focus on what we really want to do, which is to recruit, keep people hunting. I think uh, if I would go as far as to guess what our goal would be for this group, it would be that, um, you know, in a couple of years, we could look and note the difference of uh, the amount of hunters that are out there in every state, the amount of people that are actually starting hunting from new, uh, you know, to be a new hunter. And that's kind of what I'm, what I'm going for in it. And what brought me to it is the opportunity to just get new people out hunting and get people back into it because that's what it did for me is it got me back into it and showed me how great it can be looking at it through a different lens and a more educated kind of, like you said, a more nuanced way of looking at hunting. And and, uh, I would like to, you know, bring that to as many people as we can. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, we were talking about this on that, on our leader admin page there about how it's kind of hard to see i mean it's hard to see generational change in anything really until you're a few maybe at least a few generations out from that change then you can start to see how things have shifted but from from the work that i've done in the the seat that i sit in i can tell you that there is real shift coming from emergent hunters and people that are brand new and bringing their own heritage to it that's way different than what i came up in or what even you came up in because I also watched ESPN outdoor shows every Sunday morning when they came on. And I remember the day when those got canceled. And I remember thinking, you know, things are changing. I was just newly in the uh, hunting industry, in fact, when they got canceled. And so I feel like things have changed, for, you know, for many years. But now uh, we've seen with this show and with others, other things that we do, uh, there's a lot of you out there listening that are brand new to this. And so every every step you take towards our community with your own perspective, you're going to change uh, the tide. You're going to sh- change the foundation on which we stand. So that's I think that's a big part of, of why anybody would want to join something like this. So I appreciate I appreciate that. And we were, we were saying that to Jim Fleischer. On, he, he wrote a message about that last night to us um, about – Exactly that. So that's so. If you want to be, let's let's start by saying, if you want to be a leader, you you won't find me particularly, me personally. Maybe you'll find Mango the Engineer on some of these chapter pages. Phil, do you feel like when you create your page that you'll visit the chapter pages and grace them with your evervescent uh, presence and soul? Yeah, I know. Oh yeah, of course. I'll check in, see what's up, say hey. Uh, this whole thing is just yeah. It's really it's really cool, Ben, and I think. Uh, I don't know if I'm going too far as to say it might be the coolest thing to come out of this podcast. I don't know, man. You're pretty cool. Like, oh yes, people. Yeah, that's right. I I did come out of this podcast. You're right. Yeah, you were nothing before this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know what? It's also cool. You got to play video games 
with uh, that is listeners a of great the show. point. <laughs> that came out of this. never mind. That I, t- I, I take it back. Me, me, me finding a Destiny Two friend to play with. <laughs> that was the coolest thing to come out of this podcast. <laughs> yes. Um, all right, man. Well, let's try to start at a point that makes sense. Again, to recap for everyone, we made a joke about possibly having a regional chapter when we had a gentleman in the Blue Ridge Mountains that needed help, and we had so many people put their hand up to help him. I made the joke that, oh, that could be our first regional chapter. And um, fast, if you allow me to fast forward to this moment, here we are. <laughs> um, that's that's how this began. Now, where we are, you're here, Luke, to, to represent all the leaders of our chapters. So we have a lot of questions about, like, where are we? I lost track of where we were long ago. Um, and I'm hoping you got some, you've been keeping track. How many actual Facebook pages are out there that are hunting collective chapters? We have no. um, we have 39 pages, um, but Nevada has a chapter leader without a page yet, so that'll bring us to 40. Um, so then we'd only have 10 states that weren't represented. Uh, shout out to Patrick from Alabama for uh, throwing together our Google Doc sheet that's got all of our information. We yeah. track all that stuff. Can you believe that, Phil? We got a Google Doc. Wow. W- would you like to be a part of that Google Doc? I mean... You're welcome to. You're invited. You don't have to be. It's just it's an open invite if you would like to be added to the Google Doc. Oh yeah, of, of course. <laughs> throw me on. Throw me on that Doc, baby. All right. <laughs> well, we're getting somewhere. All right, Luke. So we have 40 pages now. Um, do we have like a f- total membership number? Now I would counsel. I, I have yet to counsel all the leaders that I do feel as though we should grow very slowly. Like yes. we should take this very. We don't want this to be a thing. Just for anybody to come in that wants to, as we've we've seen already, like get dope on a good hunting spot, or um, or just you know just come in to sell their wares or whatever it might be. So I would counsel everyone: let's 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 grow slowly, um, but we got to start somewhere. So where are we right now with those pages? Well, I actually posted that on our our admin Facebook group. Um, we had a guy that was already trying to schedule a a, a local public lands cleanup. And I said, I don't even think we know how we're supposed to get members yet, let alone, uh, you know, get people to go and clean public land. So I think you should slow down. But as of right now, we're at 866 uh, total members. Uh, California is leading that with 202 members. And that's a shout out to Jordan Rigsby and Nuri Hong. Um, After that, we got Wisconsin with 87. Arizona's got 84. And then Washington and Colorado both have 76. Um, those are the, that'd be the five biggest chapters. Here in Nebraska, we've got 23. Um, I've noticed a lot of guys in the bigger states with a lot of members are starting to uh, double up. Or even some chapters are talking about getting three guys to be kind of the admin, uh, the yeah. kind of the mentors of the mentors. What I did in Nebraska is um, everybody I added uh, when I started the group was somebody who what I consider, I would consider an expert in some aspect of the outdoors. Um, sure. I got, I got really lucky. Of, uh, one of my older, old friends is a guy named Jordan Namath and he actually works with, uh, he's worked with Cabela's and he works with pheasants forever. And, uh, he's got his own, I think they've got their own clothing brand called Audi obsession, but he's, uh, you know, he's worked with these big companies before and he knows how to kind of draw members in and stuff like that, especially coming in from Pheasants Forever. And uh, he's a huge fan of the podcast. And so when I reached out with, to him and talked to him about kind of helping me with his page, he just freaked out. And so it's pretty he's pretty excited and I'm pretty excited about that because he's one of the best hunters I've probably probably ever met in my life just in the way he does it he's got young kids and he finds a way to get them out there into the outdoors with them and they have success and i think just a lot of people our age will who are wanting to get into emergent hunting will be able to learn a lot from him and i know a lot of other guys in other chapters are starting out doing that too is they're yeah. trying to reach out to guys who know probably more than them almost everybody i reached out to knows more about hunting or fishing or anything than me um nobody in Nebraska knows more about gardening and canning than me, though, so I can be the expert in that and help people with that stuff. That's right, man. That's that's yeah. I did. I'll just like stumble through how to articulate how cool that is, but it is very cool. Um, yeah. We've had a lot of people across, like a lot of people over time, trying to. You've had people say like, "Here's the manifesto. Here's the roadmap. Here's what's possible." 
right? And obviously, when you start something like this, you and you don't really know what the roadmap looks like, there are a number of questions, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what are we trying to do? Like, what do we actually do? Uh, are we just a bunch of people that want to hang out and go hunting? Have you thought about that at all? Have you talked to any other leaders of other chapters about this kind of stuff? Because I have, like I said, uh, there's lots of posts on yes. our Facebook page of, of people want, wanting to answer those things. Well, um, what I always kind of went back to was that outdoor recreation adoption model, um, you know, the recruit, retain, reactivate. And I thought yeah. if we were going to take a, a look at anything in, you know, our group, it would be just focus on the recruit and then the reactivate. You know, our biggest focus yeah. would be on recruiting new people. And I think the best thing to do would be to, for people in these states, you know, the more experts you recruit, you have those experts go out and find people or, you know, they know people. Now with social media, you know, everybody's got a thousand friends out there and you'll be able to find, you know, people that are interested in some aspect of what we're doing in these groups. And I think that's a better way to grow organically than to just, you know, get on and add all your friends. And so I think yep. that's what we're trying to do and to recruit new members. And then people who, who are like me, who used to hunt when they were little kids, you know, they'll see, Hey, there were, these guys are starting this group and this is kind of what it's all about. And so they'll get back into it. Yep. I like it. I mean, I, I did send out to all the leaders, a few rules we live by and some of our rules for hunting and conservation. Again, I was, mm, I'm going to say three, four white claws deep. Can yeah. I put these together as nice. a bullet points? So Phil, I'm going to need your reaction to this as well. If you'd like to add anything, uh, I really just want to engage you in this process. Cause right now I feel like you're on the outside looking in and I need you here. I need you to be my confidant as always. Okay. Ben, ben I, I appreciate you reaching out, but I, as I said on the podcast, probably too many times, I don't know if I'm the person, person to, Damn it, Phil. to be doing that. <laughs> I, I quiet. Want, I want the this there there there. There's a time and place for the non-hunters' perspective. Uh, this for for this, I'm I'm gonna step aside. I'm gonna step aside. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you to be quiet right now, and then I'm gonna bring you back in later, and you're gonna have a different attitude. Okay? Yes, sir. All right. Come back later when you're ready to play ball. Luke's ready. He's ready. He's Let's like calling this. his friends up, man. I love and it. You need to be doing the same. You need to be doing the same. You need to I'll get you a shirt. You need to be, if you could take Mango to the veterinary, you need to be recruiting people in all areas of your life. Uh, and I need you to be fired up. But anyway, here are, are the rules we live by. Uh, at least I live by. And if other people would like to live by them, that's fine. Uh, number one. And again, I was half lit when I wrote these. Always actively challenge your own beliefs and the beliefs of your community. Remain open to nuance and skeptical of pandering bullshit. Seek out your own biases and understand their impacts on your worldview. And uh, finally, never take yourself too seriously because those first three can be real problematic if you yourself are an asshole. So don't do that. Uh, Here are the rules. When I think of hunting and conservation, this is how I personally think of it. When it comes to wildlife conservation, we use the North American model as our guide, as in the guardrails, not the not the uh, Bible, but the guardrails certainly is imperfect model, so we can kick it in its teeth when we need to. Uh, second to that is a hunter's goal should be to maintain the health of the ecosystem in which he or she hunts. Pretty simple. We must prioritize fair kill over fair chase, never shy away from discussing the ethics and morality of our actions. Number four, hunting should always be viewed as the sustainable use of a natural resource. And number five, the hunting community should strive to be inclusive by promoting a diversity of ideas and backgrounds. Uh, yeah, so those rules govern the way I've come to think of it. Those rules are subject to change daily, hourly. Uh, should Phil send me a cool link of something to read? I'm willing to change them at any time. But that's, <laughs> that's how I approach them at this point. And um, I think it's, it's as we start these chapters and we start down this road, uh, it's important to understand kind of the origin story of why we are doing this. We're proud to welcome and introduce a new sponsor to this here program, and that is Chevy Silverado. We're in the big time, folks, and that's the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. We all know that there's a Chevy guy. Everybody knows a Chevy guy. There's one among my buddies. There's probably one among your buddies, and this is a uh, diehard community of Silverado fans and they all like to hunt and fish, it seems to me, or a lot of them do. I know I have buddies that have Chevy Silverados, and they all tend to brag about their trucks. They all tend to talk a lot of shit, but we love them anyway. You know, the Chevy Silverado and those those Chevy buddies of ours, 
They were designed, engineered, and built to thrive in the great outdoors. In fact, for more than 100 years, Chevy trucks have been trusted partners for those with a passion for the outdoors lifestyle. For the ultimate off-road adventure, the Chevy Silverado Trail Boss is ready to off-road right from the factory with a 2-inch factory lift, automatic locking rear differential, Rancho shocks, dual exhaust, and Goodyear Wrangler Duratrack tires. And the Trail Boss, like every Silverado, has a Dura bed, the most functional cargo bed of any competitive pickup. Go to Chevy.com, that's C-H-E-V-Y.com, or your local Chevy dealer, and see for yourself what happens when legendary dependability meets modern capability. The Chevy Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. Well, you guys, it finally happened. I got LASIK surgery. It took me 39 years to feel comfortable making this decision because, well... Your vision is important and you only get two eyes. But thanks to LASIK Plus, I can see clearly. I don't have the pain and irritation of contacts anymore. And I don't have to wear glasses. I'm only going to wear glasses now that are fake glasses because LASIK Plus changed my life. That's right. They're the leader in laser vision correction in the U.S. over 20 years in the industry, which is why I went with them, because I didn't feel comfortable with anyone else. They have performed over 2 million treatments and LASIK is all they do. So they focus on that. That's their expertise. It's a second generation family owned company. I felt very comfortable with that. And it has literally changed my life. I am so happy. LASIK plus you guys, I want you to feel the same. If you're tired of contacts or glasses, get in on this. If you're treated in July, you get $750 off their first wave light laser. Plus they have guaranteed financing for every patient. I'm telling you, do it now. Your life will be changed. So what other, what other things we need to do, do on here, Luke, what do we need to tell people? We need to tell people how to find these pages. That's for sure. And how they can get up and, and who the leaders are. She so wanted to just run us down the list of let's call out our chapter leaders. If we can, do you have that? And then also kind yeah. of how they can search and find their state chapter page. Give me just a second here. Phil, you fill in this moment, Phil with some commentary. Uh, All right. Oh, so, I, thank sorry, you, Luke. Quiet, ahead. quiet, <laughs> quiet, Phil. Let Luke talk. Stop interrupting him. <clears throat> so we got these now in alphabetical order. Uh, Alabama, you're going to go with Patrick Ray, and that's going to be you're going to all of these are going to be called the Hunting Collective, and then your state's chapter outside of a few. Um, you know, we have the Blue Ridge, we have the Coastal Plains, North Carolina. Um, Mid-Atlantic, we have a military chapter, um, the Mountain West, New England. Those are all going to be grouped together, and those are all going to have specific leaders as of right now. Um, like, as of right now, we don't have any leaders for either of the Dakotas. So what we've been talking about is me taking over the South Dakota one um, until we can find somebody to get up there. Uh, we're also thinking about putting North Dakota in with Minnesota. But I'll read you guys the, mm-hmm. the states and their leaders now. We have Alabama. We have Patrick Ray, Alaska. We have A.B. Rich, Arizona. We have Mark Dill, Arkansas. We have Jacob Davis, uh, Blue Ridge. That's North Carolina. Uh, We have Eric Hall, the man, the myth, the legend himself. Uh, That would Mm. probably be your inaugural chapter. That would be the Phil Taylor Memorial chapter. Um, Yeah. Hold on, hold on. (laughs) Memorial? (laughs) I don't know. What do you call it when they're still alive? All I know is memorial. I don't know. (laughs) How do you how do you well, honor someone that's awesome and still alive? I, I don't know. Oh, I like Memorial. I like Memorial. That's <laughs> yeah. it's looking into the future. It's this planning for the future. That's right. So that's a, yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what. When you name your first turkey, then that inaugural chapter will be named after your first turkey, and it can be the blank turkey memorial chapter. Oh, in honor that's of a that great idea. Turkey. See, look at that's this. A great Stop idea. asking me for ideas, Ben. Ask Luke, great idea. ask Luke for the ideas. Hey, Luke, do you have any uh, engineering skills, podcast <laughs> engineering skills? Absolutely none. Absolutely I like what you're none. bringing to the table here. Okay, continue. Please continue. <laughs> but then, uh, you know, California right now is our heaviest hitter. Um, it's got literally a quarter of our total membership is just out of that state. Um, and mm-hmm. they've got Jordan Rigsby and Nuri Hong. Nuri Hong is also a member of the Nebraska chapter. He's got a Facebook page called Emergent Hunter, Phil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so just, I want to read something. Thank you for that, because I want to read yeah. something that he wrote here when you're done. But I was one. I was going to ask you who that exactly was. Yeah, but, he. because okay. I blocked him like three times. And I was like, no, ISIS, <laughs> stay out of my page, ISIS. This is so fake. That doesn't even make sense. But 
It wasn't. He does. Okay, it's good. Bad. It's good to know that's who that is because I because he had been posting it a couple of times that I didn't I I didn't know. Yeah, and then we have a we actually so we do have chapters down here in the uh, United States, but we also are a multi nation group. It would be multinational group because we do have two yes. Canadian chapters. Uh, they're led by Dave Campbell and Dan Kohler. Uh, then we have a Coastal Plains of North Carolina chapter, which is Reed Jarrell. We have Colorado. That's Ryan Sapena. Uh, I'm going to butcher his last name. Sapena. 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 Yeah. yeah Sapena. Oh. Like no, court. I'm just saying, like I know. I'm just, that's how just how I say it. It could oh. be Sapena. <laughs> no, I don't know. That's, that's just how I say it. Uh, Florida has got a guy named Mark Ern- Ernest. Uh, Phil, he did actually just start Facebook for this group. He is one of the few people that I actually didn't I didn't let him in the admin group because I was like, oh, created 19 minutes ago with zero friends. You're definitely not a bot. So I blocked him. So people are doing that, Phil. It's all a cool thing. It's worth it to let the government track you to be a part of this group. Uh, Georgia's leader is Mike Morris. And then we go all the way down to Iowa. And that is uh, Jim uh, Fleissner. Yep. We got Kansas is Kelsey Guy. Uh, we've got Michigan. That's Keith Sprague. Our military chapter is Eric Jobber. Uh, we've got Minnesota. That's um, Derek Storkel. Missouri is Greg Moon and Ben Peterson. Um, Nebraska, which uh, it'll be j- – it's just me as of right now, but I will probably ask a guy named Jordan Amoth to help me with that, especially if we take over South Dakota, which, by the way, shame on Spencer Newharth. I don't yeah. know. Phil, where, Phil ran away, but I was going to say, if he did end up giving one of those koozies from our wedding, take it back because he doesn't have a group, so he can't, he doesn't deserve I was very surprised. And let me just say that I may have missed an email from someone in South Dakota. <laughs> like, I had a lot of emails. So there may be somebody, that, if you're listening to this and you're mad at us, like, just, just write back in and tell me, hey, I had my hand up and you missed me. Yeah. Um, but I haven't seen anything from either of the Dakotas, which... Uh, I love hunting in your states, yeah. especially the southern one. And uh, I was very disappointed in all of you in the Dakota. Sam Soholt is over there. Uh, I yeah, just I don't understand. Guy. Yeah, I don't I understand. A, I have a friend that played uh, was actually Carson Wentz's backup at North Dakota State, and uh, he hunts and stuff. And he, I sent him uh, all the information about it, and he hadn't done anything. So boo. Oh well, maybe boo we'll get Carson him. Wentz. Maybe hey, we'll get Carson we Wentz eventually. We could pull him uh, off of his TV show. Yeah, man can dream. I, mean, yeah. I think he wears Sitka. Boo to that. Uh, can't do that. Hey, yeah, we, oh, by the way, I'm looking at my emails now. Uh, we have an Australian, somebody with their hand up in Australia, Luke. I'm going to connect you with Zach. He's uh, Aussie Arrow on Instagram. He okay. said, uh, good day, Ben. I'm not going <laughs> to read it, in a, but he said, good day, Ben. So I just have to say it that way. He uh, emailing me about becoming the chapter leader of Australia, mate. I've uh, been listening since episode three or four and think the discussions you have and the people you have on are very beneficial. I don't always agree with them, but I love what you're doing. I'd like to be a part of it. So uh, I'm going to send you his email, Luke. All right. We will throw that shrimp on the Barbie. And then we've got oh, nice. uh, Nevada. Their leader is Jared Adams. Uh, then New England is uh, Dwayne Tribner and A.B. Rich. Uh, I imagine that they will probably end up getting some guys to help them as that's four states they've got in there. Uh, yep. New Mexico is uh, Michael Noss and Sean Minucci. Uh, that's a good one. New York is Martin Resnick. Ohio is Brian Howell. Oklahoma is Aaron Shaw. Pennsylvania is Mike Barrick. South Carolina is Ryan Waters. Tennessee is Callan Harrell. Utah is BJ Trickler. Washington is Chris Stalker. And Wisconsin are Mike Peterson and John Stelflu. And that would be all of your chapters that are up and running right now as of today on Facebook. So, Yep. And I don't like – Phil, we could – I mean, we chose Facebook just because it's the easiest thing. But, Phil, I mean, we could do something different for you. We're willing to change this up. Like, it's all about – No, no. Fa- right? I, I, I will make a, a THC chapter burner account. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. I'm totally fine with that. Okay, good. Mango the engineer. I like it. All right. Well, that's that's awesome, man. I mean, for that to come together that quickly, it is uh, amazing to me. And I was telling Eric Hall, doing some messaging back and forth with him, that it's just, he said, well, you didn't know you were so popular. I was like, I don't know if that's the case, but I feel, I feel like this is a good representation of where a lot of people are at in our space. 
And when we try to and we try to define like our own lane within hunting, this is a good way to 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 define the fact that a lot of people are either looking to bring in new folks or are new folks themselves that would that are in need of a mentor. Um, and so I know we we're talking about how you get that generational perspective of where you sit and and what you bring to the party. Um, I think this particularly is something that uh, shows exactly what a lot of people need and what they want and where their heads are at. I'm going to find this post by Nuri Hong. Um, I would, like I said, I was confused that it was a merchant hunter for a while. I'm like, yeah, wonder who that is. But I think Nuri made a good post about a manifesto or a roadmap for what's possible. He said, um, if I, if I may be so bold, I'd like to posit a scaffold for an ambitious vision. This is coming from the perspective of a non-hunter aspiring to be a future mentor. I believe my journey and my evolution in beliefs and perspectives represent a data point of N equals 1 for the feasibility of this plan. <laughs> I like his approach. I, I, I'm assuming this data point will be explained in time. He said, 1. Establish ourselves. Become the regional platform for new hunters. Ben, the leader, has outlined the core principle we will live by. The group has already begun to do amazing things in less than 72 hours. Our mentorship is exponential at this point, and we need to keep going. Thanks to Patrick Ray for creating an amazing tracker. We've, we've mentioned that. Uh, number two, build the army. Mentor and educate emergent hunters on all aspects of hunting and conservation, land policy, environmental policy, wildlife management, ethics, etc., Within our network, we will be the leading hunting mentors and conservationists in each regional slash state chapter. We will actively recruit these people to join. At some point, our mentor our membership will be, become compelling for others to use as a platform for education. Uh, three, deploy the army. Let's be honest. Emergent hunters are often stereotyped as democratic hunters. This is 100% true for a state like California where I live. I was called this once by a very generous local mentor. He loves folks like us, quote unquote, and has taken many on hunts, even ones who wore man buns in their hair. <laughs> His words, not mine. <laughs> I do not rock a man bun. That's good to know. Although this is a judgment free zone all the way around. Man buns are welcome, right, Phil? I would say they're encouraged from here on out. Okay, I'm adding. I'm adding to the list. Bullet Thank you. point seven: man, man bun required. Nah. How's <laughs> Nope, Luke. That's, <laughs> don't let him do this, to us, Luke. I can't Sorry, get on board to... with you there, brother. Okay, I, can't get on board I, can, with that. I can go video games, but I can't go <laughs> man buns. Video All games right, are awesome. So, <laughs> Nuri, Nuri continues. The point of all of this: our army is a bridge to people who do not hunt. We do not understand who do not understand hunting ethics, who do not understand how conservation works, who do not understand land policy, and to not do not understand everything else, <laughs> etc. Essentially, this was me before I started this journey. What I've learned has changed my worldview. We can use this army as a voice for educating others and crossing the political bridge. We can unite what is divided in the name of conservation and wildlife management policy. We don't have to convert everyone to become hunters. We don't want that, but we can get them to like us and to become allies on common causes. We can use our army to achieve this. Uh, create the TH... See emergent hunting training ranches for wildlife conservation. Think back 40 for new hunters. Establish a new nonpartisan political movement. The Land and Nature Party. Elect the presidential ticket of Ranella slash Latvian Eagle in 2024. Select Ben the leader for Secretary of Interior. Who is in? Uh, Phil, are you in for all of that? There's six six really important points there, bud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Why are you laughing? I, yeah, sure. I mean, I, th I think there there might be there might be some competition for Secretary of the Interior. Um, Who was second? Was that Cal? Was it Secretary? Yeah, yeah. Of the Interior? I, was, I was thinking Cal for Interior. That doesn't Cal mean there's not a spot for you day. though. Yeah, I'll I'll be. I maybe. Uh, I don't know what I'll be. I'll just be in there somewhere hanging out. I'd like to be maybe a lobbyist. Trans some kind. <laughs> you'll 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 be transportation like Pete Buttigieg. <laughs> they just th throwing him a bone. Here you go. You get transportation. Yeah. <laughs> Secretary of Education. How about that? <laughs> well, a lot of that, even though number six, I probably am not into. <laughs> the other the other things, maybe not even number five. I don't think we need to start a land and nature party, although that'd be fun. Um, particularly what Nuri's saying around deploying this activity is important to me. And to get it out there and to have people understand that there's a common cause here, regardless of however you label yourself or are labeled by others. 
so I like that. There's a bunch of other really important uh, messages from people who are just talking about how this is, has made them feel. Um, I want to read John Stelfu, Stelflu. I'm sorry, everyone. I'll always get your name wrong. That's just how it is. It's kind of a rite of passage here for me to fuck up your name. Uh, he said, hey, everyone, I just want to make take a minute and talk about what has happened in the last few days. I've been doing this hunting and fishing thing for about 40 years. This quote-unquote thing has re-energized me. I was telling Mike Peterson, the other Wisconsin chapter leader, that I'm as excited for this as I was when I booked my first paying guide date for muskie fishing years ago. As the last few days have went on, I feel like every one of us could show up at an outing and shake hands and talk like we've been friends for years. I think we're all coming at this hunting and fishing thing from just about the same place. Thanks for doing this. I'm, I'm likely the old man river in this group, uh, but hey, someone has to be. I really believe we can make a difference, even if it is just picking up some trash in a parking lot. This is going to be a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, man. I, I just want to make sure that like those words are probably more important than any words that I could say. Um, and I said this on the page there that I that that gives me a little bit of a little bit of hope for the future and some satisfaction in the work. So hope that does for everybody else. Now, anything else that I'm missing, Luke, before we get to our little uh, the way we're gonna round this all out and and give people a chance to do something cool? Um, no. Did we miss anything here? I think we got it pretty much uh, all squared away. One thing um, I had talked about doing with Jordan here in Nebraska that I was going to uh, try to get your blessing for or see what you thought about it is um, a lot of guys just on the group have been talking about how to get membership and things like that. And uh, I happen to be lucky enough that just through the uh, kind of connections I made in college and stuff, I've got friends that work in the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation and then at work in Pheasants Forever and things like that. And so what Jordan and I were thinking about doing is either uh, having like a podcast or a vlog that would just be talking to these groups about how to, how they recruit, you know, how, how do you go about having an auction? How do you go about having a fundraiser? How do you work on your membership? When do you start, you know, when do you start looking for dudes? When do you start, you know, trying to, you know, actually like have projects that you're going to do that'll be in your name? Do you need to be an LLC? All those kinds of things that that you don't really think about when you just want to get a bunch of people together who like to hunt and to, to get people to start hunting. So yeah. I don't know. Um, it would be one of those things. We'd probably just make it available to the guys that are on our, uh, our Facebook pages and on, on our thing. And we would just talk to them and like, uh, that would just kind of be a thing we would do to try to make it easier. Cause I don't know how any, mostly for me, because I don't have any idea how to recruit. I don't know how to do anything like that. To get new people yeah. to come on. I think that's the, the problem is yeah. A lot of us are really good at kind of, uh, understanding what this is about but not a lot of us really know how to go about making it happen and so that's kind of something that i would like to learn how to do because i think this could be huge i think this could be our version of the rocky mountain elk foundation of that we could be we could be that big just with the momentum that we have kind of with everything that you guys going i think we could draw in members the right kind of members and do just huge things i mean look at the way that we affect the ballot box now just about you guys bringing up bills and stuff you know, on your podcast. And just imagine now that if you've got a whole group to go besides go with that podcast to help get these, you know, the bad bill round up, get all of those thrown out. And I just think that, you know, the sky could really be the limit with this. And I'm just so excited to be a part of it. I'm just, just super. Can't I love say it. It Phil, Phil, uh, do we need to get, we should probably get a lawyer, huh? Uh, Legal representation. <laughs> yeah. Luke, uh, the ambition is incredibly inspiring. Uh, that's, I mean, I, and I'm, I, I, at first I was going to like say something sarcastic here about a lawyer and how, you know, meat eater should probably, we should probably have a, a meeting with, with Steve or somebody, but I don't know, man, that's just a, that's just a great thing to, 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 to strive for. And I don't, I don't have anything, I don't have anything <laughs> snarky to say. I, I don't, I don't. <laughs> Listen, this, uh, when you start down a path like this, you just got to keep going forward. That's, that's the best you can do. That's about all you can do. Yeah. Um, so we'll keep doing that. But yes, we're absolutely want to feed. I, I I sit on the board of directors for BHA, and we've seen this exact thing happen in that group. Like you, you get people are passionate about this thing. They're passionate about gathering, um, and you just have to let that passion lead the way. And you know, every once in a while, you'll trip and fall down. But 
uh, as long as you have that passion, you can get back up. So one thing that we're going to try to do uh, for everybody is we're going to have a little, we're going to call it a field days program because obviously this all started because somebody needed a mentor and everybody listening to this podcast wanted to step up or, or a large number of people wanted to step up. So that was yeah, kind of the beginning here. So hat tip to that beginning. Uh, we started, we want to start a field days program. Now this is each of the chapter leaders will be running this themselves and they'll be compiling things. So if you're not in these Facebook pages and part of the conversation, you're going to miss out. But uh, we do this at Meat Eater and we did this with First Light um, internally, but it's something I think we can, we can make work uh, for this whole thing. And basically um, we're going to do something called, well, I guess I'll call it field days, well, but it could be, tell me it's right into TAC to Meat Eater and tell me there could be something cooler <laughs> for a name. Maybe Phil has a name. The inaugural Phil T. Engineer Mentor Contest Memorial Tournament. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll, 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 we'll turn that into a to an yeah. acronym. It'll be fine. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll workshop it. We'll workshop it. Anyhow, what this is going to do is incentivize people to go out there. At the, very, at the very least, go out there and teach people what they need to know about hunting. Bring, bring new people in and then teach them. That's, that's basically what we're going to do as a foundational effort here. So um, here's how it's going to work. If you go out, if you are a member or are you're part of a Facebook page for one of the 40-plus chapters we've got going out there, uh, and you join, and you take someone hunting, someone brand new. They don't have to be brand new. They just have to be in need of membership. But brand new would probably be what we're shooting for. But somebody that's in need of mentorship, and you're out there and you're willing to do the mentoring, join one of these chapter pages. Take that person or person's hunting Take a picture of yourself, send it in all to that Facebook page that's associated with the state or regional chapter. Once you've done that, describe the hunt. What was the hunt about? Where did you go? How long? If you do an all-day hunt, you accumulate what we'll call two raffle tickets. If you do a half-day hunt or a part of a day hunt, you get one. Over time, each chapter will amass a number of, let's say, raffle tickets or days in the field. And each chapter will then be able to come to us at the end of the year and say, we've counted this many days mentoring in the field. And we will have five awesome prizes, including all types of things we're currently working out. Some chapter leaders had a a bunch of good ideas for prizes. But at the end of the year, we'll draw these prizes based on the number of field days total for each chapter will be the number of raffle tickets you get in the hat. So then we will draw raffle tickets out of the hat and if the chapter is drawn, the top mentor of that chapter will get that prize. So hopefully that's that's a little bit convoluted, Phil. Does that make sense to you? I know this is the first that you're hearing it. So as always, you're my proxy for everyone else listening. No, that's a great idea. Okay. Now we have a reason for being, right? We have the general reason that, that these chapters are built to mentor people, built to bring in new hunters. Uh, along the way, as Luke mentioned, we're, we're going to go probably down a million rabbit holes and have all kinds of things to figure out. But but that's the basis. So if you join one of these Facebook pages, it doesn't take much. If you have to make a Facebook page, just do it. It's fine. Turn off the tracking and the data. Don't watch. What's that? Don't watch the social media dilemma or whatever that. Don't watch that because <laughs> you won't want to join. Um, but get in there and join. And then all you got to do is track your hunting with a new hunter and you'll be entered to win some cool stuff. And um, you'll be entered into an awesome program that kind of knows where it's going, but you'll be a part of the beginning of it. Any commentary, Phil? Official comments uh, as an employee of Media Incorporated. No, this was, uh, I, I still can't believe this is happening uh, for something that started as a joke about a cult. Um, I got so many messages from people back then saying, please tell Ben to stop with the cult bullshit. <laughs> mm. um, but I think it's flowered into something real. <laughs> and uh, And, you know, just below cult status, so I think we're in. I think we're clear. I think we're in. We're we're still green. Everything's fine. Um, but it's it's just it's really it's. I mean, honestly, it's wild to see this happen. Sometimes I forget the 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 the, the reach of your show, Ben, and everything that uh, everything that you've uh, talked about on this podcast throughout the last couple of years. So it's it's cool. It's it's awesome. Okay, Luke, anything? Well, 
actually, we had some guys get locked out of their pages and stuff for using the uh, cult language. I know. It and, came back uh, to bite us finally. So uh, uh, to go back to what you were, we were talking about at the beginning um, with, you know, the first family and everything, you had one guy on the page who said that we should change the name. And then you had another guy on the page who uh, posted a gif of William Wallace yelling hold and said, never give in to Facebook. And uh, I would think that the guy who posted a uh, gif of William Wallace would be your, the guy you'd want to follow, you know, the leader probably of those fans, not the guy who suggested changing the name. So, yeah, I mean, I just can, to go back to I'm that. I'm picking up who that guy might have been. Yeah, I mean, you <laughs> know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, listen, I, I, you know, I'm not going to let Zuckerberg hold us down. If we want to no. be a cult, it's just a word. No, exactly. It doesn't have to be it's exactly. a bad connotation, you know, just like AR-15 or trophy hunting. It's just a word. Well, it's a group it's of crows is called a murder. No one gets yeah. mad at them for that. Damn right. Murder's Maybe we could be. Thing. Yeah, we wouldn't be. You know, THE murder. Yeah. Murders. Like, we're not doing that. So you can be grateful for that. So all right. Well, listen. If you're here for some kind of like, you know, in-depth conversation about a very important issue, I'm sorry we took a break from that, but we felt like uh, this needed to be addressed. This needed to be uh, explained away, and we needed to kind of set a path forward. So we'll, what we're going to do from now on in the show is give weekly updates we're going to bring somebody on that's a leader we're going to ask him what the hell's going on what they're doing why they're doing it um and we're going to continue our little field days uh competition throughout the year and we'll continue checking in and seeing where this goes uh eventually we may have to have a lawyer on to give an official statement on behalf <laughs> of phil and i we may i may be in jail i may be jailed and you guys may have to bail me out. You might have to raise money via some sort of uh, Venmo account or something. I don't know. Uh, these are just, this is just me. I'm just talking out loud, Phil. Just talking out loud. Okay. You well, got anything I, here? I, well, I mean, I gotta say this. You say you're just talking this out. That that was a lot of detail. It's almost like yeah. you've kind of this is premeditated. Like like you you've, you've you've run this through your head and you've got some sort of master plan. Um, can you right, well, can, every... can you speak on that, please? No comment, but okay. every cult has a martyr, and uh, <laughs> if I got to go down, I'll go down to swinging. All right, Phil? It sounds great. I'll miss you. All right. Well, say bye to everybody and listen to, for the second time in this uh, brief episode, Kayla Ray singing the Phil T. Engineer memorial <laughs> theme song for TA. I swear to God, I swear to God, Ben, if, 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 if someone plays this at my funeral, I'm going to be furious. <laughs> <laughs> say bye, <laughs> Phil. Goodbye. <laughs> Clean your gun and tune your bow, we're the Hunt Collective Show. Calling hunters new and old, the Hunt Collective Show. Working pick and shovel or working pen in hand, we congregate now as lovers of the land. Mindful and we're focused, we're just living for the search. Dreaming of a fire and a salty gill burn, but we ain't coming back till it's cold and late. Taking it slow so we can shoot straight. Clean your gun, tune your bow, we're the hunting collective show. Calling hunters new and old, ain't no cult I'm told. But no one's too good and we're all good enough. We got fealty engineer calling any shooter's blood. Hard times calling and bitter vegans crying. Remember there's always been old bride. Ruled by reason is our collective faith Taking it slow so we can shoot straight Clean your gun and tune your bow We're the Hunt Collective Show Calling hunters new and old The Hunt Collective Show Where facts are facts and opinions are subjective You're listening now to the Hunt Collective Hey, we got a new sponsor here at the Hunting Collective, and that's Chevy Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. You know, we all know a Chevy guy among our buddies, and this community of diehard Silverado fans in hunting and fishing just continues to grow. I got Chevy buddies. Most of them are crazy. Most of them will do anything outside. Uh, you know, most of them tend to brag about their truck. You know, the Chevy Silverado was designed, engineered, and built to thrive in the great outdoors. In fact, for more than 100 years, Chevy trucks have been a trusted partner for those with a passion for the outdoor lifestyle. So go to Chevy.com. That's 
C-H-E-V-Y.com or your local Chevy dealer and see for yourself what happens when legendary dependability beats modern capability. The Chevy Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. Get ready for a gloves off spin on the classic advice show with the Dear Chelsea podcast. Comedian Chelsea Handler and her assistant slash confidant slash co-host Brandon Marlowe lead the podcast that offers unvarnished, hilarious and empowering advice to people from all walks of life. Instinctively, I would always tell everybody to just like reach for their dreams and and go for it and take a huge risk in life. Listen to Dear Chelsea on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts.